listen to me, listen to me real good. I've told you once, I said it a thousand times. You get out of those pagan, satanic, religious, Christian churches. Christians do not follow the commandments of the Bible. Christians do what they want to do. They make up their own laws, their own rules, and their own regulations. Come out of her, my people, and come out from among them. And it's real simple and easy to ascertain who are these people you need to come out from. Easy. Number one, if they keep Sunday, that's an automatic sign that you need to not have any fellowship with these commandment-breaking, wicked deceivers and seducers and bewitchers of the truth. Simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, family of Yah. We're here on another Shabbat by the grace and mercy of Yah. Hallelujah. <laughs> come on, come on. <laughs> Hallelujah. It was almost having to have service down in the dining hall because the uh, transformer out there had tripped. But most I had mercy on us and praise Yah. No matter what, we'll still, we'll still get the word on Shabbat. We'll still get our uh, portion of rest. Hallelujah. <laughs> Most High is so gracious to us, so merciful to us, so loving. We, that's how we make it through the week, I think. Oh, hallelujah. I think it's his strength that keeps us. Yeah. When our strength is small, his strength is made much more powerful. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our blessed Heavenly Father, in the wonderful name of Yeshua Jesus, come to you thanking you for another Shabbat, thanking you for another opportunity to enter into rest, Most High. Just praying always, Most High, you always lead and guide us. Be our portion, Most High, this day. Lead us and guide us into all knowledge, wisdom, and understanding by your grace and mercy. And we thank you, Most High, for the meeting up in Wisconsin and all that's going on there. What's going on all throughout all the uh, communities, Most High? Thank you for continually keeping your eye upon John Paul, Most High, raising him up and strengthening him up, building a testimony in that, Most High. And all this, we give you all honor and glory in the blessed name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated, saints, the Most High. Uh. Well, we made it another week. And I'm very grateful for that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Always grateful. Whew. Things out there are getting, I don't know, what can you call it? <laughs> Stranger or, I don't know where the depths of perversity is going to go. The depths of wickedness. Whew. There's always something coming out every week. But we know we are in a war. It lets us know we are in the end times, saints of the Most High Yah. Because we know that the beast is in action. The beast is in action continually. Especially upon the world scene. He's blaspheming the tabernacle, blaspheming the name of Yah, his authority, everything that is Yah. He's jealous, he's covetous, he's envious, the God of this world who wants to be like the Most High, wants to be the, with the congregation that's in the sides of the north where the people of Yah are upon Mount Zion. And this being, this created being that was full of wisdom, perfect in beauty, desires our place, him and all that fell with him, desires your place that you have reserved for you. That's if you keep this faith unto the end. That, that is, salvation is a continual daily thing. We're not saved yet till we seal our testimony in death, physical death. Even though we have died the second death, whereas the grave and, and the sting of sin should have no more place or, or no hurt in us hallelujah we have such great beautiful things ahead of us if we would just endure 
We would if we would just endure. I mean, I see too many people relying on their own intellect, relying on their own works, relying on their own understanding. We got all these religions out here that are pointing them to something of this world. Whereas the saints of the Most High are being pointed to something that is eternal, something that is everlasting and should be. That's where our mind should continually have its focus. Because the things that are behind us, they're behind us. I've talked with a few Christians this week at work and all their mind remains is what happened in the past. What's happened in the past? The past has... A, a, a stronghold on their ankles is like a ball and chain and they desire to, to drag it with them. And they profess Christ on the outside because that's all they can do because there's nothing on the inside. And all these religions of this world, they, 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 they teach and they propel, you know, somewhat, somehow, some way, these self-helps. And they're failing. Miserably. Failing miserably. Everybody says that we got truth, we got truth, we got truth. But what is truth? What is truth in us? Hallelujah. Saints of the Most High. Yah. Let's go to John 18. I was just reflecting the other day how long I've been in this walk, in this journey, and it's almost half of my life. And I'm like, wow. And I look at my former life, how disgusting it was, and how I'm glad I left that crap behind. Then I look at this new half of my life, which is the real life, and I have no disgruntlements, I have no complaints. All I have is praise and adoration and thanksgiving. And I think I like this life better than that, that, that life which I lived out there in that world, that, that fake, false, fiat life that the, 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 the one that wanted to be like the Most High is out there peddling. Yeah, he, he's in people's pockets again this year. We're getting ready to have a happy Thanksgiving. Everything's happy. You know, they got to, you know, got to somehow stir up something to make themselves happy on the outside. And when once we make it past happy, we can go with Mary now. So we can sing our little hymns, Noel, Noel. Yeah, you're right. Noel for you. No Elohim. <laughs> and then they're going to sing, away. Yeah, he's away from you, huh? Away in a manger. Uh-huh. He's not near. He's not in you, but you're going to sing that he's away in a manger. But that stuff is so fuzzy and it's so wonderful to cuddle, you know, and roll around and embrace, you know. Makes you feel fuzzy for a day. Then it's gone. Just like dust. Holidays. I thank Yah that he allows us to partake of his feast day. Something that is real. Something that is tangible. Something that is ongoing. Something that, it is, that it, once we pass from this life... And to the real life, it's going to be ongoing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 18, starting in verse 28. Then led they Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. Notice that. They led Jesus from Caiaphas unto the hall of judgment. And as you know, we know who was leading him. The scribes, the Pharisees, the hypocrites, all those that were against him. The religious order of that day. And, and they themselves went not 
into the judgment hall. Why? I guess they didn't want to be judged, huh? Because they said, lest they should be defiled. <laughs> but they might eat the Passover. And it says Pilate, and we know Pilate was the uh, prefecate or whatever you want to call the Roman, I guess, leader, the Roman whatever in place watching over that providence, over that precinct or whatever he was doing. It said Pilate went out unto them and said, What accusation bring you against this man? And they answered and said unto him, If he were not a malefactor, we would not have delivered him up unto thee. Then Pilate said unto them, Take ye him, and judge him according to your law. And, and the Yehudim therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put any man to death. Well, it was in their hearts to put someone to death, right? That the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled which he spake, signifying what death he should die. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Yehudim? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself? Or did others tell it of, thee, of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Am I a Yehudim? Thine own nation and the chief priest have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. Hallelujah. I'm glad our kingdom is not of this world. Hallelujah. It's one thing when we have a testimony and we have within us, it's not our own testimony. We know of a fact. We know, you know, in the experience in this world, we know this kingdom is not, our, of, not, is not of this world. And I thank you all of that. My kingdom is not of this world. He said, if my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Hudim. But now, my kingdom is not from hence. Said Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto what? Unto the truth. Who's bearing witness unto the truth? Mm. Thou sayest that I am king? Saying this to Pilate, because Pilate can't say that. Because Pilate is going by rumors. Pilate is going by reports that was given to him. Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born to be king, right? For this cause came I into the world to being born, that I should bear witness unto the truth. So in the beginning was the word, the word was with Yah, and the word was Yah. What to bear witness? Just as John said, I'm bearing witness that one cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to unloose. But it's Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. He, he came into the world to bear witness unto the truth. Because there was no truth at that time. Truth was standing there before Pilate in the flesh. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. So if you are of the truth, now we look at truth as, I think we look at truth as in some abstract form. We've always learned truth from a world perspective. 
Then Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? Unique thing coming from a Roman, huh? Asking truth, what is truth? When he told him right before his face, truth is standing right there before you. Truth. Webster's Dictionary defines it as conformity to fact or reality. Exact accordance with that which is or has been or shall be. We can understand, you know, that's from a temporal perspective, right? Temporal perspective. Conformity to fact or reality, truth, exact accordance with that which is or has been or shall be. Webster's Dictionary. And again, the actual fact or facts about a matter. But as we read right, right there before us, we see that truth is identifying itself in a bodily form. Truth, a fact or belief that is accepted as the body of real things, events, and Jesus saith unto him. What did Jesus say? I am. Before Abraham was, I am. The way. It's amazing about the I am, huh? We don't really understand sometimes the power that is in us. When we come into, you know, the knowledge of Yeshua HaMashiach, we come into the knowledge of I am. We come, you know, to, to understanding when we pray, when we in deliverance or whatever, when we're casting out devils or healing the sick. That we're, that we're not doing it of our own volition, of our own strength, but we're tapping into something else. We're tapping to the, in, the I am because he's present at every time. He was present in the beginning of your faith, and he said he's going to be present at the end of your faith. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto him, I am, I am the way. So there's a certain construct, a certain path, a certain map, huh? I am the truth. And I am what? The life. We can see out there in this world how much peddling goes on for that kind of life. All the marketing and everything that's on in the realm of commerce is pertaining to living that life. But we, the saints of the Most High, I, we have another life that allows us to come unto the Father. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh. No way you can come to the Father except through Yeshua HaMashiach because of the way, the truth, and the life that he is bodily and as a spirit. No man cometh unto the Father, how? But by me, the mediator, the one who met in the middle, the middle wall partition which he took down. Hallelujah, taking it out of the way. What is truth? What is truth? We're still understanding that Yeshua, Hamashiach, is truth. And we see how much everything in this world fights against the truth. Fights against you and me. Fights against us walking in truth. Living in truth. It, it does not know him. Galatians 1. As time goes on, I, I'm, me, myself, I know the heirs of salvation have ministering spirits that are with them. 
We've been so accustomed to under, understanding other spirits that is with us. We, we have no problem understanding when envy is with us, when jealousy is with us. Well, you know, we have, we've had communion with that. No problem. No hindrances. We have communion and fellowship with hate and bitterness. But now we come into this walk, all of a sudden we're going, huh? How? How, how, you know, how do I have fellowship with joy? And how do I have fellowship with, with wisdom? How do I have fellowship with long-suffering and gentleness? All the spirits that are there with you, you the heirs of salvation, there to minister, but we rather turn to the ones we are familiar with. What is going on with that? To understanding truly the host of heaven and leaving all this host of hell behind us. For this purpose he came into the world to destroy the works of the devil. Truth. 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 And everyone is claiming we got the truth. I know the truth. This is the truth. And this is of a truth. But who really understands and fellowships with truth Galatians 1 this is Paul writing to the assembly at Galatia and he says I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel And I'm like, is there any other good news besides the truth of the real Yeshua HaMashiach? Is there? Is there? But Paul's looking at the, the church, at the people of Galatia, assembled, and these people were removed into another gospel, and there's a whole lot out there now. They didn't have the internet there. Just look, you know, at any chance we can pick up our phone, pick up a laptop, pick up... You know, a little pad and get, get on the web, get on the internet and, and, and lust after knowledge to our heart's desire. And it's there. Is it there for good or is it there for evil? It's according to what you have purposed in your heart, how to use it. But I thank Yah for his indwelling spirit to always lead and to guide into real, true Truth. But these people had, had, had Paul bamfoozled that they, that they had been, been given ear to another gospel. And it says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you. What the, the, the stuff from another gospel. There be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. And we see, especially in this ministry and this walk, we have seen many perversions of Christ, haven't we? And the Most High allows us to see this. Not, not, not for our detriment, but for our betterment. To help sharpen in our senses our eyes and our ears, and I thank the Most High God that he allows these to go on. Because these things must needs be. Just as he must needs pass through Samaria, we got to pass through a lot of things. So the suffering for our present time, it is for our betterment. That suffering is for our perfecting. That suffering is for our, our maturing. If we're going to be clay moldable, we've got to stay malleable in his hands. We do. But these people were, were moved and, and they were given ear to someone that would pervert the gospel of Christ. But it says, but though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. That's the one thing this time and this hour. Israel, as a whole, does not want to be unified. 
And it is sad. Very, very sad. I know through the years I've been with Pastor Dow, been his friend, been through a lot of experiences and listening and learning and growing in knowledge and truth, I really, really have not had lust to go outside what I've learned here. I, I do not want to entertain doubts in me. Because sometimes doubts will persuade us and propel us to go out and to hear other things. Well, I'm not so sure about that. And there's a lot out there, you know, to, to, to shovel it in. I mean, it's droves and droves and, and droves of shit. And, it's, and it calls itself truth. But it's a deception. They, 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 you got to understand those that are ministering might be servants of corruption. I've seen many people, you know, get dangled just a little bit of truth in front of them and bite it. And after they're enveloped in that little truth, then that whoever is ministering that poison has their full ear and full attention and they're pulled away. I'm starting to understand the unity that we need to have in Israel, which Israel does not have. Somehow, some way, we, we, we go to the highways and avenues of doubt. Thinking, you know, I, I might learn a little bit more over here. Or I might get a little more, more truth and understanding from over here. Yeah, I know the word says study to show thyself approved, and there's nothing wrong with that. But with many books, you can worry yourself. You can worry yourself. And the one book that we tend to shy away from and dealing with is the book of ourself. How many of us study our shell, self? And then in studying to show ourselves, see what chapters are in there that is contrary to the construct which we have learned from the Word of Yah. Now this book is being written daily. And, it, and it's known and read of all men. We don't have to say a thing. Our mannerisms, the way we walk, the way we conduct ourselves, it's being read. You can change the message, you can change the people. But I thank the Most High Yah for putting Pastor Dow in my life. And I know a lot of you are. Because I myself have had a background of going to many churches trying to witness and, and trying to feel Yah within my being. And even in that searching, in that journey, I received a lot of hurt, a lot of pain. But still, the Spirit of Yah in me allowed me to use that as a climbing tool, as a stepping stone, as something to bring me up. I could have, you know, went the way of the world and let it bring me down. Let it bring much sorrow on me. And it wasn't until, you know, that one time I was invited to a Bible study. And, every, and all that time that I sat in that rocking chair in the city reading the Word of Yah time and time out, I mean, just continually reading and reading and reading, going to this Pentecostal church and looking around me, and I'm like, I've got the construct of what I've been reading in that Word, pure construct, you know. I've read it, and I believe that what was written in there was true. I have no deviation. I had no other influences of to pervert that. And then when I was in that Christian church, I'm looking around and there was things contrary to what I was seeing. And I started asking around and one, one member told me, you just turned a blind eye. And I'm, well, I'm like, ka You're like, no. 
And this progressed and progressed and progressed. And my heart's desire was to experience the most high Yah. I never did got that experience by laying on the floor like I did one time in, in a Baptist church laughing for 45 minutes. That was not the truth. But there was something in me, a hunger in me to, to really experience the most high Yah. So I was driven to go all these places. But nothing was fulfilled until I went to that one small Bible study, quaint, humble Bible study, and the words that were spoken came alive in my being. It's like all of a sudden I really woke up. I mean, my eyes were open. I'm like, I was just floored. And I had a witness within myself because the I am that was in me Became, showed himself more and more because of that gospel which I received from pastor. It became alive. It became real. I could actually touch and feel. I was looking all around. You know, in the temporal, I was thinking, you know, I can experience Yah in so many forms this way. But until that one Bible study with, with that, that happened within me. Christ was really awoken. And then it set my feet astray. The I am set my feet a flint. Went to that Pentecostal church, told that Pentecostal pastor, two weeks I'm out of here. I'm going to go help this man do a work. There was a witness in me greater than myself. I didn't understand what the I am was doing within me at that time. Not knowing where it was going to take me, lead me, guide me. But I had trust in him. Because my, my understanding and, and my belief was not perverted. It was not straight in any form, any matter. I was just a young babe. And I've suffered loss of many things. But I still have the same testimony that Paul had. We have the same fellowship of sufferings. I counted that as all dung and loss, but it's still gain. It's still gain. Hallelujah. 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 But it says, both though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And again, we said before, so, I, so, so I, I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel <coughs> unto you, then that ye have received, let him be accursed. And he says, for do I now persuade men? Or now do I persuade Yah? Or do I seek to please men? And it says, for... If I yet pleased men, I should not be a servant of Christ. But it says, but I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after men. And not after man. We see out there in that church world, and tomorrow morning they're going to be preaching the gospel after men. They're going to be getting into the pockets I remember Pastor Dow some time ago gave a sermon and talked about, you know, churches like that, church he come from, they'd break out, give, 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 giving in Jesus' name. Give, give, give. And as he's doing, he's pulling out his pockets. You know, give, give. You know, there's nothing in his pockets because he doesn't give so much. <laughs> giving in Jesus' name. And we... And we was in a basement, and he could say, phone, give, 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 and they're giving, giving. Next thing you know, he turns the lights out. He ain't got no money for the light bill, but you've been giving in Jesus' name. <laughs> that was so profound, because he was telling the truth. And there are many, many instances when we went back to that church, that, that we had the love of Christ in us to try to persuade them with the truth. But they would not hear. Now this time, this hour, that 
That, that, that assembly is given over to women. Perverting the gospel, huh? For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And I thank the Most High Eye for that one Bible study. When the revelation of Jesus Christ really, really, really just opened my understanding, opened my mind, everything that the Most High Eye, knowing, you know, what was going on in my heart, knowing the pureness of my journey, the I am knowing what I have need of. Because I would take the time in prayer to groan in the spirit. He would hear my groanings. He wouldn't hear my English words, but he understanding that pain that was in me. To know him, to experience him. So he provided all of my needs according to his riches and glory. And from time to time I've seen how much more that verse is so real in my life. And a lot of us have seen so much how that verse is real in your lives. It's no longer words on a paper. It's, it, it's tangible. It's life. It's truth. Truth manifested. He was taught by the revelation of Jesus Christ. For ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the Jews' religion... How that beyond measure I persecuted the assembly, the church of Yah, and wasted it. And it profited what? In the Jews' religion. You hear that? Commerce, huh? As I was talking before, it profited in the Jews' religion. Above many, my equals in mine own nation, being more exceeding jealous of the tradition of my fathers. But it says, but when it pleased Yah, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace, how to reveal his son in me, that I might preach him among the heathen. Immediately I conferred not with the flesh and blood. I remember that, that one Bible study. I, I can really attest to what Paul is saying. Because in the words that were spoken there, the words that were taught there, the words that were preached there at that Bible study, it revealed Yeshua HaMashiach in me of a truth. I cannot explain. It was beyond anything that I could grasp. I just allowed it. I just submitted myself. I humbled myself to receive the pure word, the gospel of Christ. And there was a witness in me that this was true. This is true. This is real. This is life. Most high has in, man, heard my utterings and heard my groanings and seen my travails and watched and, and pulled me through my sufferings. Yeah. To allow me to hear the real word. I wanted to hear the real word. Everything that I've been reading, I've not seen it manifest yet. Until that one Bible study. And then from then on, I've seen the real Jesus. Hallelujah. I've seen my real family right here even before me. Real family. Of a different blood. Of his blood. Of his spirit. Not, not no temporal family. This, this is a family that's eternal. This is truth. I see truth manifest. Real truth. Not nothing shut up in a book. Oh, there's truth in this book. And no good, you're going to carry a book around and you say, this is the word of God. This is the truth. And then it just stays there. The word says, and he gave some apostles, some prophets, what do you do? Oh, we got a giving, a giving Elohim. That's in, that's in contradiction to the God of this world who is propelled to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Is that giving or taking? Hmm. 
not easy. That's not too hard to discern, is it? Especially when we're walking out daily wars and daily strivings and when we're taking the thoughts to the gate and you, are you here to steal, kill, or to destroy? Or, or are you here to give something? Like, like, that, like the I am in me gives me witness that he gave me this understanding, gave me this wisdom, gave me this knowledge, gave me this strength, gave me this peace. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. Why are you giving, Most High? Why? Why I keep reading you gave your only begotten Son for what reason? When Yeshua in his own time, it behooved me to be made like unto my brethren so I don't take on me the nature of angels. I'm going to take on me the seed of Abraham. I'm going to walk in flesh and blood as the one you gave me, Father. I'm going to manifest truth unto them in this bodily form. And he gave some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Why? For what? Perfecting of the only a certain, certain body of people, only a certain assembly of people, saints. <coughs> For what? For the work of the ministry, not our ministry. Straightway is not our ministry. And we can testify that of a truth. I, know, I understand without a doubt this is a ministry of Yah. And we can see how marvelous it is in our eyes. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying what? The building up, the strengthening of the body of Christ. Till, this is coming to a time, to a summation, to a, to a place of completeness. Till, we all, how many? Come into what? Unity. Of the faith, but there are so many faiths out there. I'm glad the Most High Yah has given me a faith to testify of that's in me. Not the faith of a, a plaque on a building saying that's a Baptist and it's a Methodist and it's a Catholic and, and, it, and it's a Hebrew's roots and, and it's Messianic. Do we all come in the unity of the faith? And do we all come into the unity of the knowledge of the Son of Yah? Why unto a perfect man? He wants us to become mature. Not like the world says, oh, you think you're something perfect. You think you don't do no wrong. Yeah, yeah. They look at perfect a totally different way. They look at a temporal perfect. We understand a more greater and mightier eternal perfect unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. All this is so that we can be partakers of his nature to be conformed to his image. Not like the God of this world said, I'm going to be like the most high. But given us the ability and the privilege to be like the Most High. Yet, through His precepts, His laws, His commandments, His structure, His doings. We've got to come into the unity of the faith in this. Even up here hollering and flaying and doing all my annex. Just in a, somehow, some way to, to, to persuade my brothers and sisters to get their minds on one accord. One spirit. It is, it is, it is a labor. And the Most High Eye has put on us that, that gifts that He has given unto us. Why? That we henceforth be no more what kind of children that are tossed to and fro. If you're feeling yourself being tossed to and fro in this ministry, I'm watching what you're listening to. I wonder what you've been hearing. 
Nevertheless, we've got to understand that we are children. This is pivotal even in understanding. This is truth. That we are children and if we can come to Him as children, many times I said it allows Him to be a father. When we look even in the report, how many times He wanted to be a, a husband unto Israel. But they would not allow Him. They wanted other, other nations to go in unto them. And because they had that mind, they didn't want to be taken away, they didn't want to be perverted, they were tossed to and fro. We can see the to and fro's that they were put in by all the captivities that they were thrown in. Everything they despised and hated, they, they became captive to. Looking out upon the nations, looking up out, out upon the world. We want, a, we want a king like they got. When, when y'all told Samuel, I, I was their king, but they, they, they just don't want me. And a lot of these Hebrew camps and, and these Messianic movements, he's still not your king. And this other gospel out there that ain't liberating people, that ain't making people free, that, that they ain't having no fellowship with joy and long-suffering and temperance and meekness. That the people don't have no fellowship with the ministering spirit. Hallelujah. Tossed to and fro and carried about just as our forefathers were carried about to Babylon, carried about to Persia, to Greece, to Rome. Carried about with every wind of doctrine. How, why this? By the slight of men and cunning craftiness. Whereby they lay in white wait. They lie in wait to deceive. And it is out there, saints of the Most High. Huh? When pastor says, be careful eating off other tables, he means something that's very deep. <sighs> but speaking the truth, how? In love. For who is love? Yah is love. But speaking the truth in love may grow up into him, Yeshua Hamashiach, in all things, which is the head, even Christ, hallelujah, from whom the whole body is fitly joined together. The what? Right now, there's blasphemy going out against us. There he is a beast that does not like us. We've got to understand, especially when we're on our jobs, when we're, when we're having conversations with the heathen. You don't know what they got. I you know we may see you know, them smiling. But I see a lot of them, that smile's painful. They're just doing it just to be courteous or something. I don't know what's going on with them. But I look at them and I go, uh -huh, hey, I see you. <laughs> How you doing? Get out of here. <laughs> you don't really care. Increase of the body unto the edifying of itself in love. And that's one thing I, I'm very grateful for the Most High I allows in this ministry is the fellowship with love. Oh, mercy. As time goes on and on, I, Love, the expanse of love and the depth of love, it, it's just beautiful. It, 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 it's something that creates a hunger in each and every one of us to constantly walk and seek after His love. Has we experienced that so-called love out there in the world, how temporal it was? But now we, 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 we have a taste of eternal love in us and allows it to, for us to share it with each and every one of us to pray for one another to deliver one another to heal one another 
That's a great entrance. That is a beautiful fellowship, which meaning all of our lifetime being subject to the bondage of death we're looking for. A lot of us come out of some damn dysfunctional families. And there was something in us that wants real family. And now we've been given real family. A lot of people come here and see real family and they forsake that. A, a, a family that's ed, it's desired to edify itself together in love. A lot of us know some things about one another, but we don't hold it on each other's head. Because we consider ourselves, likewise, in the same manner, we allow it to be more uh, in, in a realm of humility. Because we know how degraded and how filthy we are. Hallelujah. God, we got to make an increase of this body. God, we got to get this body edifying itself. I heard pastor saying, you know, even during the feast, there's only a few people that, that, are, that, that are manifesting themselves through certain gifts. And, and, that, and that comes through love. All the gifts work in love. Question. What profits more, saints? Eternal truth? External truth or internal truth? Think about it. We can go outside and say, ah, the sky is so blue. Is that true? But tomorrow, will it be blue? Or a week from now, will it be blue? But it's true that it's blue right now, right? In the next hour or two, rain clouds may move in. Might get dark, but of a truth, it was blue, but only temporary, right? So what profits more? External truth or internal truth? Temporal truth or eternal truth? Questions. So much truth out there. We the saints of God, we've got to, we've got to get out the discerning, the discerning mind, the discerning spirit to really see what things that we allow into our house. Is it going to be temporal truth or eternal truth? If I understand myself as a new creature, old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. That, that I've received the Spirit of Yah within me and I've received the gift of the Spirit, which is eternal life. Then I want this eternal truth. I want something that will go with me beyond the grave once this body ceases to exist. There's going to be some truth that's going to perish with it. But what truth is there for me as a child of Yah that I can take with me into eternity? And that's what the Most High is trying to get in us. Unity of the faith, unity of the Spirit. As if we could just come together as a body, as a whole, in one mind, one spirit. Just think what things can be accomplished if we're all, if we're all working in the eternal. Behold, thou desirest truth where? In the inward parts. And it says, and in the hidden part, Thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Truth will help us to make us know wisdom. And we read so many times, we read it in the count. I've read it in the Apocrypha, I read it in Proverbs. How, how the, the ministering spirit of wisdom will make herself known to you. How many times she cries out for fellowship. You read it. Have you ever read it like that? That she's speaking and I, I'm seeking fellowship. But no one wants to fellowship with me. No one wants to eat of, at my table. No one, no one wants to hear of my goings and my doings. I, 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 I tell you, I was there when, when the Most High was making the world. I was there with Him. And I'm like, wow, I need to know you then. Huh? I need to know you, Wisdom. Because I learned by the report that there was a creature 
that was born in the day, that was created in the day, that was full of wisdom. And I'm like, I'm in this war, Most High Yah. And you give me this ministering spirit of wisdom to, 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 to comfort me and to lead and to guide me and to instruct and to guide my feet. I need to have fellowship with that. And I don't need no more. If I'm having fellowship with wisdom and with knowledge and with understanding, with joy, what are the time that I have for fellowship and with envy and hatred and bitterness? If I have my cup full all the time of the word of Yah, the water of life, what else can go in there? There is no allowance for nothing else to be put in there. The enemy will come and say, I can't go to that house. That house is occupied. Uh uh. Hallelujah. Saints of the Most High are in the days coming. Seek fellowship with wisdom. Seek fellowship with the spirits of Yah. They're there. They are there. We're so accustomed to fellowship. And we're so acute and, 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 and normal it is to us for you know, all of our lives. The fellowshipping with hatred and bitterness and envy. You know, that's no problem. But now in the same likewise manner, we have a new family. That in this family there's no bitterness, there's no strife, no hatred, none of that stuff, which was tearing me down in times of old, which had me in the bellows of sorrow when I was aching and hurting, lying on my back, throwing up all over myself. Because I was trying to escape me. And all my boozing and all my carousing and all my, my toking and whatever was going on. I was running from that pain and, and that suffering that I could not endure. But I am thankful for Christ being up on that tree and allow me to reckon myself to be up on that tree with Him. Of everything of that old life, its appetites, it, its lust and everything was up on that tree being taken out of the way. That was contrary to me. That was contrary to us. Not like the world looks at it, I'm just nailing the law to the tree. I don't read that. That is not the truth. That is not the report I receive. I'm not going to receive that perversion. And many people receive that perversion and then they walk in that perversion. They will know or never know the love of Christ. Never, never have the ability to enter into the fellowship of His sufferings. To be made stronger. To be made more mature. To be made more upright. Hallelujah. We want to go and, and have this spiritual bypass. There's a lot of the Hebrew camps out there, that, you know, they, they can't receive the Spirit of Yah speaking out of a white man. Oh, I'm white. Am I white? You're white. <gasps> You're white. Oh, my God. Yeah, that's, that's temporal truth, yeah. But this, is this who I am? Do you know me after being a white man? Does my whiteness offend you? But the Spirit of God in me is offending you because I tell you the truth. I am a child of Yah. I am a Hebrew. I'm not going to do like you and, and go this spiritual bypass. As I'm here speaking in the spirit of Yah, and yet you cannot hear my words. You cannot understand my speech because the only thing that's in your way is this veil. This wall, he's white, he's white, he's white. 
Okay. So what does it profit? I know I'm white. The hell was I being white? I'm not going to go the path of that crap. I'm not going to do like you and stand on street corners, holler out Esau and all this other crap, and do the works of a white man that he wants you to do. That, that as you do this and they walk on by and he's all you and all your crap, the white man standing back, good job, keep, keep this division up. Come on. You're doing the white man's job for him. You're getting the work of this thing called racism, another body, another gospel. You live in this other gospel, see, seeing the external things of, of, of this world. And then your judgment is impaired. Your judgment hall is shit. Hallelujah. 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 Yeah, the white man in this time and this hour wants this stuff scared. To keep us out of the unity of the faith. Out of the unity of the spirit. I don't care if I was, I was blue up here. Will you still receive me as a servant of Christ? If I'm speaking from that word of a truth. Yes, sir. Amazing. These people are so carnal. Yes, you're carnal. So carnal. That's why there's no love among them. That's why there's no healings among them. There's no casting out of devils and, and, and cleansing the lepers. They've had no fellowship with love. And neither do they want to enter in. Because they worried about the white man. Like I said before, he, like I read on Facebook, he's wearing a garment. So what is sad for you that think like that, you are not wearing the garment though. You have no righteousness in you. You have no love in you. You have no life in you. You have your father, the devil. He was a liar from the beginning and abode not in the truth. So a lot of people in truth, it's presented before them. We got to go the route of the spiritual bypass. I was walking this way, now truth is before me telling me something. This is a defense mechanism that shields us from the truth. You seek to save your own life? Spiritual bypass. You're going to lose it. You seek your own? You're going to lose it. Spiritual bypass. Too many of us go this route in truth when the mirror is before us. Not so much that we battling against the God of this world, but no, don't tell, show me myself in the mirror. Hell no. When the truth does what it's supposed to do, show you of your sin, iniquity, and treasure. But I don't want to see myself in that matter. I'll go spiritual bypass then. Just get off the main highway, go to bypass 666. Take your mark and live that life. At least you'll have, you know, you can buy and sell now, can't you? It's a defense mechanism that shields us from the truth. It says when truth hits our flesh, what happens? Our feelings and emotions tend to receive it as an attack on its being. What? The flesh. But the construct and the word and the truth tells us do not walk after the flesh. So if you don't walk after the flesh, you will not fulfill its lust. But if you walk in after it, that lust of feelings and that lust of emotions will show itself. 
Word comes to you and you're a liar. All that is in the world, lust of the eyes. And then you see the face contorting, lust of the flesh. And you see the drawback and the going away from the truth and the pride of life. All that is in the world. Yeah, you're full of the world. The world is being reproved in you. Receive it. Do you love the world? When truth hits our flesh, our feelings and emotions tend to receive it as an attack on its being. Because it seeks to protect itself. And it says, especially when it has covenanted with sin. And it will protect itself. By any means, through this, through this spiritual bypass, we, we tend to check out. And many of us probably in here are checking out right now. So that we can, that we can avoid the bigger picture. When all the word is there to you, it's coming to you in love. Desiring to pull you out of shit. Desiring to pull you out of the mire. Desiring to pull you out of the sin, iniquity, and transgression. If we would receive it, if we're walking out through the spirit of love, we will receive it as love. Is that easy? Yes. But no, I've got to go over here and buy me a, a, a 150 volume uh, set of encyclopedia to understand this. Spiritual bypass. By any means, we check out so that we can avoid the bigger picture. So that we can avoid the elephant in the house. Now, he's no longer in the room. He's in the whole house now. <coughs> he's sitting right there, but we, you know, we, like most people do, they know the elephant's there. And they're like, you know, walk all around, you know, got a bypass, even though it's there. So what are you going to do when the Word tells you there's an elephant in the house? You're going to acknowledge, yeah, the truth, it is there. How long is it going to remain there? How long? <coughs> it's always a desire to escape the pain. Because <coughs> sometimes the truth does hurt. I've many times I've been... I've been I've been floorboarded. I've been I'm taken to the ground, cut down low because of the truth, showing me such a big error that I was in. But while I was at that low estate, I allowed, you know, to, that prostration there, it gave me allowance to go to the Most High, to go to the one that so, so supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. So when I, now I'm low, Seek to Him while I'm low and let Him pick me up. <laughs> Hallelujah. Like this Christian woman I was talking to, you know, well, we're having this and this in our marriage and this and this is going on. He don't love me no more. Blah, 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 blah. And I looked at her and said, you've been praying? And it's like something foreign to her. But I believe the gospel. Well, yeah, it's in the it's in the Bible. But have you been praying? Crickets. Something about this pain. The people of the world more they 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 clamor and they fight, and they'll go to the extremes to fight any pain in their life, any pain of you know bad marital relationships, you know, molestings or, you know, bad traumatic experience. They go, you know, to the help of the world through drugs and booze and all this other carousing crap because that's all the world can give for that crap. A temporal relief. While all the time they're not understanding that this thing is in the spirit and you're going to the world to try... Use temporal things to, 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 to restructure something that's going on within you spiritually. It seems some, that's why, you know, the medical industry is so at a height now in, in, in monetary gain and everything because everybody gets a little pain in the elbow. Oh, I got to go to the doctor. You know, I'd break a little nail. Oh, I got to go to the doctor. I got a pain here. Oh, go to the doctor. 
Or if there's something in the house, I got to get an aspirin, I got to get this, I got to get that. There's something about that pain, huh? One thing I've learned in this walk is let pain again be something positive, something real, something tangible to, you know, to persuade me and to push me. Even though in some instances it's might trying to be pulling me down, but now I'm going to turn the tables on it and let it push me up. Yes. No matter what these circumstances are, because I receive from the gospel that I am a child of Yah and He shall supply all of my needs according to His riches and glory. I trust in that. So the pain in this walk is temporary. <laughs> it's nothing compared to what's going to be revealed in us if we keep the faith. Hallelujah. So let the pain have its perfect work when truth comes. Now there's no cut from a two-edged sword that feels good. Because it cuts going in and it cuts going out. And we feel it. When it's deep inside, within your inner man, you feel it hard. It's worse than a flesh wound. So I let it strike me down so I can get down before him prostrate. Gives me an entrance for repentance to have its work. I let the Most High God do what His Word. I give Him entrance to do. I prove Him at His Word. And then He's pleased to perform that very thing that you're proving Him at. Hallelujah. And we run to the protection of strongholds too. While a lot of us ain't receiving no deliverance because we have solace in strongholds. That's the only thing we've known all of our lives. A lot of people can't get out of these strongholds that they're in. This, this pain that continually is in them, you know, rehashing itself and growing and growing. Somehow that becomes a way of life for them. And they conform to that life and, and they, just, they just lay all things down and say, okay, you know, okay, Sarah, Sarah, what shall be, shall be. And it's sad. Because we are people with hope, they have no hope. This evil people, <coughs> which refuse to hear my words, which walk in the imagination of their heart, and they walk after other mighty ones, other, other gods, what to serve them and to worship them as our forefathers did and which we should not be doing. Based on our time and our hour, the market out there in that world, boy, it is there to prop up self to such an exaltation. It is something else. You get into the little things like YouTube. It's you on the tube. It's your face on the book. You, you, you. A pastor preached a wonderful, wonderful sermon many years ago about self is a God. And it is. And we know. And the word says, why, Yeshua said, why do ye not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear what? My word, the word standing before them. And they still could not hear him. The religious order of that day was speaking straight to them. The one that made them was right before their face. And all they could attack him with was, We be not born of fornication. And they're going to accuse him with temporal things. And then, then Yeshua, as a sharpshooter as he was in the spirit, would talk to them about what was going on in their spirit. He didn't talk to them in temporal terms. No. He talked to them of their father. You're your father. Why you do not understand my speech, even because you cannot hear my word? And it says, ye are of your father the devil, and the lust." Of your father ye will do. He was a what? Murderer. From what? The beginning. We didn't see Satan on the scene actually doing a murder. 
But we see Cain slaying Abel, right? He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not where? In the truth. He had no abiding. He had no habitation in where? Truth. We, we are people that have a habitation in truth. If we start looking at truth in a greater form. It's more than just a little, little definition in, in Webster's Dictionary now. This grace has appeared to all men. Jesus says, I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way. You are of your father the devil and the lust of your father you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in the truth. Because what? There is no what? There's no truth in the God of this world. Woo! When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh a what? His own. Now we can see really the nature of the Hasatan, how he wants to promote self. Remember, wants to promote you to yourself as a little God. So you can pick up your phone and do all your little selfies. And the ungodly say, what does the ungodly say, Most High? Therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous, because he is not for our turn. Who is saying this? The ungodly. This is powerful, saints. I, every time I read this, I'm like, whoa, whoa, this is so much truth in this. The ungodly say, therefore, let us lie in wait for the righteous. What makes us righteous? Yeshua HaMashiach, truth in us. Because He, who, the righteous, is not for our turn. And it says, and He, the righteous, is clean contrary to our doings. He, the righteous, abradeth us with our offending. What? The law. For by the law we have the understanding of sin, right? So the wicked say that he abradeth us. We abrade them with them offending the law. And objecteth to our infamy. And, we, and, and, and the transgressings of our education. Yeah, we hate the public school system. We hate what the world is trying to put into the minds of the people, but it must be so. But the righteous are there. We're not for their turn. We are clean always. We're contrary to their doings. We upbraid, they, we upbraid them because they offend the law. We know of a truth and objected to our infamy, the transgressings of our education. And the righteous professeth to have the knowledge of Yah. And we do profess, don't we? A lot of us should be professing. And that's in us. The I am that I am. And he calleth himself a child of Yah. That's in wisdom, Apocrypha. And it said the righteous was made to reprove our thoughts. No matter what we do out there on the job. We don't have to say nothing. We just work as unto the Most High Eye. And they're sitting there going, why'd you got to work so hard? He's making me look like I do nothing. But we got to understand, we were made for this very purpose, the righteous. Because the truth in us, the I am that I am, persuades us to do it. So it, it's the governing thing that is in us as a people. He is grievous unto us, the righteous, even to behold. And it says, for his life, and it's not really our life. <laughs> the life that we now live in the flesh. We live by the faith of the Son of Yah. No longer I that liveth, 
but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of Yah, who loved me and gave himself for me. For his life is not like other men's. His ways are, are of another fashion. And I thank Yah for his construct. I thank for Yah getting everything back to the beginning, the way it was created when he said, he looked upon it and said it was good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He shall reward evil unto mine enemies, Yah will will, and cut them off in thy truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, saints. We are on live people. I believe this is a good word. This is the words of life. Now, if I'm up here and I'm saying, yeah, you can have sex on the Sabbath, we would go, yeah, boogie nights. Boogie nights. Because, you know, all right, we come alive on hearing that truth. You're the next contestant on sex on the Sabbath. Come on down. Come on, saints of the Most High God. Wake up. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 It's amazing how excited we get on temporal things. Sex on the side. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Dance the jig and just go off. But well, Yahweh shall reward evil unto mine enemies. And cut them off in thy truth. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee. That it may be displayed. Because of the truth. The amazing thing is. In many of us that has have children. And we might have a stove on or a heater on. And we'll tell that children in love. Don't touch that. You will get burned. At that time, does that child receive that though? As truth? Wait till that child goes over there and touches it. Does he receive it as truth then? Yeah. Oh yeah, by experience now he knows within himself. I better not touch that. That's hot. That will burn me. Thou hast given a banner to them that fear thee, that it may be displayed because of the truth. Hallelujah. And it says, They that put their trust in him shall understand the truth. And such as be faithful, where? And love shall abide with him. For grace and mercy is to his saints. And he hath care for his elect. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The spirit of truth. The one's going to be in us. The spirit of truth. Why? Whom the what? World cannot receive. Well, why can't the world receive him? Because he's not temporal. He's not a corruptible thing. He's beyond the constraints of time and corruption. The world cannot receive. Because what? They've got to see Him. I've got to see this Holy Spirit. And many of us, when we're tearing for the Holy Spirit, we have a bad problem of wanting to seize the moment in our minds. We don't want to relinquish. We have doubts and unbelief still whirling in us. I don't know if this is right because... I've heard that tongues is of the devil and, and this and that. You know, you can see how perversion of the truth can sway many from receiving pure things of the Most High Yah. Because this Holy Spirit is not there for you to see. It's not there going to be poured in a cup and you're going to drink it. It's not going to have a label on it saying that it's, it's organic and all this crap. But the world cannot receive because it seeth him not. But it's an amazing thing about the I am. As we read this word and believe this word, we start seeing him for who he is. Not with natural eyes because we know these eyes grow dim. They do. And they're temporarily here for sight. 
whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, and neither knoweth him. Well, we have the truth in us. We have fellowship with truth. We know the one that is the truth, the way, and the life. But it says, but ye know him. What? Spirit of truth. That is a spirit? Truth is a spirit? But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. Same spirit that, abro- that, that was upon the face of the waters in the very beginning. After the Most High Yah had to put a covering over the deep because of one creature rising up in pride within himself, thinking he wants to be like the Most High Yah. Same spirit in the beginning. Same spirit that wisdom was communicating with. Wisdom was fellowshipping with. That wisdom in this time and hour can fellowship with you. Can fellowship with me. Spirit of truth. You know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. That was in, 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 in that little verse it's almost like a prophecy. As for the truth... It endureth. What endures? Truth. Now is that temporal truth or eternal truth? External truth or internal truth? As for the truth, it endureth. Yeshua HaMashiach, the world may pass away, but the, according to that word, that gospel, The word shall never pass away. Now, if that word be in you, guess what? Who else is not going to pass away? Whereas the as for the truth, it endureth and is always strong. What is strong? Truth. And a lot of people cannot. I know they have a problem with Pastor Dow and the delivery. They see on the external, they see an angry man. Why is he so angry? I've seen so many posts. Why is that man angry? Don't he have no love? And they, yet they can't see love. And, and they don't look at themselves and say, why can I not see the spirit of Yah in this? Well, I just read, you know, they cannot see the spirit of truth because they are in the world. It's not been given them. The eyes and the ears have not been given them. So all they got to, the well they got to pull from, the belief they got to pull from, the knowledge they got to pull from is seeing somebody just animating in love, being, you know, becoming a fool for you. I've been up here becoming a fool for you, trying to, you know, to somehow, some way, uh, give unto you an understanding. And I, that, hallelujah. But I'm doing this in love. The ministers of are doing this in love. Because fellowshipping with love, fellowshipping with the Spirit, you can see we're up here, you know, sweating and up here proclaiming and up here preaching. Trying, you know, to get words, constructs in you that's going to help you in this walk. To help you understand life more in this walk. The impartation sometimes is a labor. Because we bring so much, so much stuff from the week that was behind us into the sanctuary. We got some, our minds somewhere else. We, we got too much spiritual bypassing. But this truth, it endureth and is always strong. It liveth and conquereth. What does? No matter what, you cannot fight against the truth. And there's a lot of people out there want to fight the truth, huh? R. Kelly and all them, yeah, you know, pledging. I got five smooth stones. <coughs> what the hell is that? You like the scribes and the Pharisees when truth was before them, when truth cut them to the heart and they perceived he was talking about them? Their only motive was to reach down and grab a stone. They might perchance cast it at him. Stone him, stone him, kill him, kill him, crucify him, crucify him. When he was here to proclaim the truth, 
And we understand, well, I don't know why all this is against me. Why you consider it strange concerning fire trials, which is to try you as though some strange thing is happening. This, this is ordained, it is performed, this is, this is constructed for you for this manner. That means you could walk in life, walk in truth, walk in love. You want to conquer? Have truth abiding with you. And it's not temporal truth. This, this is the truth that endureth forever. But, man, you know, here, here comes education and, and, and all this. Well, it's, it's a perverted version and everything. Again, that's why I thank y'all for the spirit of truth. Hallelujah. But even as reading this, I can, the spirit of Yah, the I am in me, in me, goes, look, and says, don't receive that. And that's, that's something misconstrued there, so I bypass it. But even within that reading, there is something still gleaned. The Spirit still has preserved something in His Word, always. And we've got to understand that, that He is that powerful enough to to preserve His Spirit even in this form. And that's why He gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers... You get these things off the page and into our hearts, into our minds, into our spirits. By any means, manners, any whatever, it must take place. How would you like to be a prophet trying to trying to reach out to, to your people, to your country, to your nation? And then you have to be lying naked for years before them to try to defibrillate the minds and their hearts. Let's think about that like, whoa, could I do that? Could the love of Yah in me sustain me through that shame? When our Savior was up on a tree, butt naked, high up on a tree, He endured the shame. He resisted the shame. Because of his great love for us, behold, I and the children which you, most high Father, you have given me. Truth nailed to a tree. By mercy and truth, iniquity is purged. Makes you wonder out there in them camps and them Hebrew Israelite movements and bow movements or whatever they may be doing. That everything that they're they're saying they're getting into, you know, this long discussion on, on this Hebrew word. I'm like, okay. But even in that truth, is iniquity purged? And, and, and by that truth is the fear of Yah that's helping us to depart from evil? Real truth, eternal truth? It says, but the hour cometh, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father where? In spirit. I make a big boast on that word. The light can be on, the light can be off. Something can be in, something can be out. And it's got to make a difference. Worship the Father in spirit. we got to be not in our own spirit. We can't worship the Father in envy. No, no, no. Can you see somebody that's, that's bitter singing one of the straightway songs? We're standing there. You think they're worshiping in spirit and in truth? I think on the Shabbat, the Shabbat I want to rest, huh? And one of the biggest rests I think I find is even in praise and worship. Because I know by His grace and His mercy and His power, I made it through another week to make it to another Shabbat. So that gives me power, energy, and thankfulness and gratitude in my heart to display in praise, worship, and adoration. Let it go. 
I let it go because we can have sex on the Sabbath. Boogie night. Ding, ding. Hallelujah. And you understand what I'm saying. The things that we get excited about sometimes we sit back and go, why did I get excited about that? You know, it's checking yourself, you know. And, you know, and the truth comes to you and the truth tells you, you shouldn't have been doing that. <laughs> Ye shall know the truth. You shall know Yeshua Hamashik, and we got to know him daily. That's why we come here on Shabbat and learn of him. This becomes rest for our souls, rest for our spirits, knowing the truth. What is the truth? Like Paula said, what is truth? What is truth? Truth was standing right there before him, and he's going to ask that very thing in the judgment hall. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall what? Make you free. So if we're out there surfing the net, learning about all this Hebrew stuff, is it making you free? Is it puffing you up? Hmm, something to think about, huh? But he that doeth truth, that's the biggest thing. One thing to know it and not do nothing about it. He that doeth truth cometh to the light. Why? If we do truth, we come to light. Why? Because we want our deeds to be made manifest. We want to see them. The, only the thing that's going to bring this to light is truth and receiving the light of the truth. Because we want them to be manifest. Because everything that we do, we want to make sure that they are wrought in the Most High Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thy righteousness, O Most High Yah, is an everlasting righteousness. And thy what? Law is the truth. Hallelujah. And it says again, for I delight in the law where? Of Yah. After what? The inward man, because Paul had a struggle. Many times he, he, when he wrote to the Romans church, he said, I find in me a law, working against the law of my spirit, law of my mind. When I want to do good, evil is present with me. I have that understanding. I have that sight now. And then he comes to the final understanding. Now I see what's going on. My flesh all it can do is serve the law of sin. But with my mind, we've got to understand this, we serve the law of Yah. Then he hollered out, Who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Talking about this flesh. So we delight in the law of Yah. And that's, that's in the New Testament too. That word law, huh? The thing is done away with. After the inward man. Spiritual truth can be the greatest liberator. What kind of truth? Spiritual truth. While knowledge has its own reward, it will fail to improve one's life unless supplied. One thing to know and not do. Be, not, be doers of what? Word and not be hearers only. We got a lot of hearers in this time and this hour. And what they're doing, deceiving their own selves and deceiving others. They're ever learning. There can always can be an ever learning, but never able to what? Come to the knowledge of what? Of the truth. I'm like, whoa. Ever learning, but you've got to come as the saint of the Most High to the knowledge of the truth, to the knowledge of, of Yeshua HaMashiach, who is the truth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, saints of the Most High. Yah. Bless you all. And I thank y'all for y'all. It's good to see family.
It's always good to be a servant to my brothers, my family, my sisters. For Yah has equipped me, you know, many times, you know, I look at myself and, you know, me and myself would, at one time, I was deathly afraid of speaking before people. But if it wasn't for the I am in me to help me overcome that, the truth in me to overcome that. And many of us deal with the same things, especially with spiritual gifts. Well, I don't know. Have you tried? Have you tried to let them manifest? Because of a truth, the Word says that we have them. Why don't we exercise them? Is there some kind of doubt that we're rolling around in, unbelief? And the Word says it's, it's, it's of a truth It's in us. It's given to us. But why don't many people cover it after spiritual gifts? Why is there only a few here for the edification of the body when the whole body should be to the edification of itself? Something to think about. Something to think about. It's truth. Pure truth right before our eyes. Right before our life. Instructing. Guiding. Nourishing. And bless you all, saints. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Most high is good and gracious, and he's continually giving unto us his children. Whew, we are children of the light, and I am thankful for that. Hallelujah. He don't want us to be ignorant on any form. Bless y'all, bless y'all, bless y'all. Our Heavenly Father, in the wonderful name of Yeshua, thank you for all things. You're always mindful of us, and most of high, we've got to be in turn mindful of you. We've got to let this fellowship continue, most high, if we desire to get home, most high, because there's an enemy out here that desires our death, desires our departure from you. We want to stay in your hands, stay in your protection. We want to stay always in your health, most high. Pray in the days ahead, you continually guide our feet, guide our hands. Let us do all things unto you, Most High Yah. You've given us truth, Most High Yah. You've given us the ability to reprove the wicked. Just by doing all things unto you, Most High Yah, they hate it. Most High Yah, the whole creation wants to be turned back into the hands of the sons of Yah. So let the sons of Yah receive what you have desired to give them, Most High Yah. We'll give the honor and the glory in the days ahead and thank you for all things when you're there. When we're there with you in the kingdom, Most High Yah, when we have escaped the corruption of this world and this life. Give you all honor and glory and bless the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise Yah.